Pentagon. Um, they do it in other countries, uh, in their ministries of defense too, gaming out how particular scenarios are likely to go. And when you gamed out Russia and NATO over Ukraine, you foresaw particular tripwires that could let it go nuclear. Absolutely, Mark. Hey, thanks for having me on. I'm a huge fan. Um, the, the challenge mm -hmm. here, Mark, is that every time I've done these war games, I've done them for about five or six years now, maybe a little longer, depending on the situation. What always happens is anytime NATO and Russia get into kinetic conflict, in other words, once the bombs start dropping, it always goes mm -hmm. to nuclear war. Uh, the reason why that happens and how the war actually starts, most of the time, I'll be honest with you, Mark, it's usually a mistake. I mean, you know, irregardless of, of the spin coming out of Moscow or Washington or wherever, nobody wants to see a war between NATO and Russia. That's crazy, that's suicidal. But what always ends up happening in these mm -hmm. scenarios is a mistake that happens where nobody can back off. In, in a lot of the scenarios I've done, give you a quick example, uh, usually an errant missile lands in NATO territory. In one example, we had a, an errant missile landed in Poland and destroyed a school. Well, the Poles wanted to respond. Mm. And that sets up a chain of events where Article 5 is declared, NATO and Russia start fighting. Russia has no way to beat NATO in any sort of conventional means whatsoever. And you don't have to have a PhD from Princeton to figure it out. It's just compare the numbers. Russia loses. It's over. Uh, so every time you have right. this scenario where NATO and Russia start fighting, what ends up happening is Russia starts using tactical nuclear weapons, in other words, battlefield nuclear weapons, smaller weapons, a little bit smaller than Hiroshima, let's say. And what happens is the United States responds with its own tactical nuclear weapons. Russia starts nuking cities. We start nuking cities. There's a billion people. So you're in, you, you, in fact, gamed out what has happened, really, in the last fortnight in Ukraine, in, in that conventional forces underperform. And at a certain level, the Russian high command knows that. So they know, and that's up against uh, the Ukrainian military. So they know if they're up against the Polish and uh, moving west, uh, other serious armed forces, including the Americans, then they know they're going to lose that. So their incentive is to go nuclear sooner rather than later. Exactly. I mean, any sort of scenario like that, the Russians lose. I mean, we've, we've gamed it out. We did one scenario, Mark, I've actually talked about this before. We took the Russians' nuclear weapons away just to see if what could happen. Is there any sort of sinister strategy that Vladimir Putin's generals could sort of utilize to, to win a war against NATO? There's none. NATO forces march all the way to Moscow. It's over. Putin's deposed. So the Russians have to use nuclear weapons. And they've told us this, Mark. This is the crazy thing that I don't understand why people aren't looking into. You Google this and find it out in two minutes. The Russians have a, a, a military doctrine called escalate to de-escalate. In other words, they know they'll lose a war against NATO. So what do they do? They have told us that any time that their homeland is threatened in any way, shape, or form, they will use nuclear weapons at their discretion. What's scary about this, Mark, is they're already starting to signal that maybe it doesn't have to be an invasion. Maybe it doesn't have to be a mm. bomb dropped on you know, Moscow or St. Petersburg or something like that. We are doing tremendous damage to their economy. I mean, depending on how you look at the estimates, we've already done about a trillion dollars in damage to Russia's economy. If you combine the, the foreign exchange yeah. reserves, they can't deploy anymore to, to save the ruble, and the amount of damage that their economy do, is, has already been incurred because they, it's not going to grow at all. In fact, it's going to lose 35% of its value this year. That's a trillion bucks right there, my friend. At what point does Vlad start to say, yeah. Well, I've already lost everything. It's, you know, maybe it's time to just go all in. That's what really terrifies me, I have to be honest. Well, that, that's the salient feature of the, these first few weeks of this war, is that we seem to have gone straight from uh, August 1914 and the assassination of the Archduke to reducing uh, the Kaiser's empire to the bankrupt Weimar Republic.